Yo, in this video, I'm going to cover how to use the event dispatcher with my asset, the dialogue component, so you can make things happen. We'll cover several things in this video, but the focus is the event dispatchers. What we're going to do is play a 24 hour day cycle whenever we talk to this cube. For this video, I'll use the level blueprint for the sake of ease and simplicity, but if you want to see how it's done through another actor, check out my other video linked below. All right, so let's get it. After adding it to your project, make sure you add the component to your character and copy the inputs. First thing we're going to do is drag this cube over here, scale it up and add a dialogue component to it. I'll change the interaction ring offset to negative 200, disable the rotate actors variable and set the ring size to 10. I'm going to change the name to something cool like the cube, but let's also give this name some color. Before the name, let's add a less than symbol, then capital D and G, then a greater than symbol. And after the name, let's add another less than forward slash and greater than. If you've seen my update 1.5 video, I explain how this is the format Unreal Engine uses for text decoration. I'll make a separate video again on that another time. Now I'm opening the dialog struct to add a branch and we'll name it one. If this is your first time using this asset, I'm putting one here because by default dialogs start at one. You can feel free to change this and update it to whatever you want. Okay, so let's add a branch and in the NPC text, we're going to say, I will change the time of day. Now I'll add two player responses in the player text for the first one, put yes, branch selection two and dialog true. And in the second one, I'm going to put leave and branch selection one and dialog true. Add another branch for two, add a player response and set branch to one. We're essentially creating this branch as a placeholder, but it's not going to do anything. It'll make more sense towards the end. I'm also going to add in a cinematic camera, enable tracking and select our cube for the actor to track. And I'll also add a camera shake component and select the light shake. I'll quickly go back to my cube, open the extra settings, select the camera we just placed. And yeah, that looks a lot better. So we want to change the time of day, which is controlled by our directional light. So I'm going to select the directional light and open the level blueprint. Let's right click and because we had our directional light selected, we can click this here and reference it. If we want to have a full 24 hours to pass, we need to increase this by 360 degrees. For the next steps, follow along and if you don't understand what's happening, it's okay. I'll explain in depth after. In our level blueprint, let's create an event begin play. Click on our cube actor and reference it. Out of the cube, we're going to get component by class, search dialog component and type assign ended and select this. Plug begin play into the bind and drag the event node down here. Then out of the event, let's hook up a branch and out of the dialog component, get the start variable. Type equals exactly and we'll search for the value 2. Then add a timeline and let's change the time to 2.5 and add a float track with two points. The first one starts at 0, 0 and the other one ends at 2.5 360. Back in the event graph, we'll get our directional lights, get actor rotation and set actor rotation, which we plugged into update. We'll split the rotations, get the current rotation and add it with the track float into the set rotations pitch. Let's get the player controller and set view target with blend. We can duplicate our camera here, disable tracking, point it somewhere this way, zoom it out and with it selected, go back to the level blueprint, create a reference for it and plug it in. Next, we drag from our dialog component, get the icon widget and set visibility to hidden. Get the interaction ring, collision range and set visibility to false and disable input from player character and plug in the player controller here. Out of player controller, enable input and plug player controller at the bottom with player character at the top. Then copy set view target and put player character in new view target and player controller into target. Copy the nodes up here and just change it to visible and true. Last thing, we can set the start variable to one and set has choices to true. Now we have a nice day changing mechanic made with the dialogue component that can loop every time you talk to this cube. Now we can take a deep dive into what's happening. 
From begin play, we're getting our cubes dialog component and we're creating an event that will fire every time the end or continue event dispatcher is called. So this is actually called here in the dialog component, continue collapse node. If you debug, you can see that it's gonna trigger every time the dialog progresses. From the event we created, we're checking if the start variable is ever equal to the value of two. We set the branch name to two here in the component and then said in our player choices, if the player chooses yes, then the start variable is set to branch two. Start is also updated in the continue node of the dialog component right next to the dispatchers. So each time the dialog progresses, a new start variable is set, either continuing the dialog or for the next time when you speak to them. Back in the level blueprint, we have our timeline that we set for 2.5 seconds and it always fires from the start. When the timeline is active, this update node runs like an event tick, constantly playing all of the logic after it until it reaches the end. This float track that we made here says for the 2.5 seconds that this timeline plays, we're going to be increasing this curve from zero to 360. And outside of this timeline, we're getting this float value that's constantly being updated and we're adding it to the current rotation of the sun. From there, it's setting the rotation continuously as well as changing the player's camera angle to the cinematic one that we added. Here we turned off the icon, interaction ring, and player input so that it plays like a cutscene. Then when the timeline finishes, we play the opposite logic. We restore the player's input, the camera, and interaction settings. To spice it up more, you can change things like the blend times or the duration of the timeline or even the amount of time that passes. You can change it from 360 to whatever other value. As mentioned, I use the level blueprint, but in the next video, I'll show you how to accomplish the same thing, but with another actor. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.